Hello YouTube and hello Tumblr. This is Scales Tales here and I'm just doing a video to show you guys my different tanks because I've posted pictures and things before but videos are so much cooler. So this is one of my two gallons. It's in the kitchen. The inhabitant is, uh, his name is Subway Sandwich and I have a kind of a cool little setup going on here. I have an exoterra light with a little compact fluorescent bulb in there, a deep blue nano filter, and my own little lid made out of um, plastic craft mesh or needle point, point mesh. Very, very cheap, very easy to make small lids for small tanks like this. And then over here, we have another two gallon, and the inhabitant in here, his name is Anchovy, and he is my old man. He is over three, but he doesn't really look like it. He's very active, he's got huge fins, he's very, uh, very happy with life. Oh, and you may have noticed that there are no heaters in these tanks. And that is because for years I've had no heaters in here just because this room actually stays warm enough, which I usually scoff at when people say that and say, oh, it's not really. But it is. I've had thermometers in here. I've never had problems with it falling below 74, 75, which is a little bit chillier than my personal taste for bettas, but I've never had a problem with the fish themselves. So not a big issue. And here we have my 20 gallon. This is kind of the nicest looking tank in my opinion. And I've made a video about this earlier, which I will link to where you can see me talking about a few of the specifics about the tank. But this one, you just look at it. And I figure I will throw in the turtle tank in this video because it is a tank. It's not a fish tank, but it is my tank. It's a 75 gallon. I have a fluval, used to be 305. I think they're called 306s now. I got a newer one. Um, it's filled with about 65 gallons of water, I think. Um, I've got his UVB fluorescent light and his heat lamp up there. And just one male Eastern painted turtle. He follows people. <laughs> so please forgive any bird noises you may hear in these next videos because these tanks are all in my room where I keep my birds so they might be a little noisy. But this is my saltwater tank. It's very, very simple. I've had it set up for a little while, maybe about over a year. Um, all I have in there is a teddy bear crab or a Pilumnus vespertilio. His name is Emilio. And they are a nocturnal crab that are covered in what looks like hair. He's kind of that dark blob, blends in with a live rock in there very well. Um, they're an omnivore. They're native to much of the equator. Um, they eat pretty much anything they can get their hands on. Uh, they'll eat algae. They will eat decaying fish and shrimp, any sessile invertebrates they can get their hands on. Um, they're known to eat uh, zoanthids in the wild or, or uh, 
uh, polyp corals and stuff like that, which interestingly enough, I think makes them toxic if they've been eating zoanthids. Um, obviously this guy doesn't get any corals in his diet. He just gets like shrimp pellets and, and algae and uh, the occasional frozen like silver side and stuff like that, which is really cool. But um, very simple tank. I run two Aquion filters. I have a deep blue high output T5 on there. Um, <clears throat> and I only have sponge in my filters. Um, I don't have problems with nitrates or anything. That might be because I'm so lightly stocked, but I just run sponge. That's it. Squeeze them out once a month, do water change. Actually, I only do a water change once a month on this tank. And I don't really have any problems. I test the water monthly. Um, ammonia nitrite are at zero, nitrates close to zero. So yeah, it's this one. So this is another tank that's not a fish tank, but is for my firebelly newt. Um, his name is Saul, and I've had him for a little while, and he used to be in a 20 gallon, but now he's in the little 10. Um, it's planted, no heater, obviously fired belly newts are cold water amphibians, so they like their water to be much cooler. Um, I have a sponge filter on there because they don't like a lot of water flow at all, and um, there's a lot of components in internal filters, and even hang on back filters that they can get caught in because they're very good at climbing, which is why I have a, a metal mesh lid on there. Um, so sponge filters are definitely the way to go with newts most of the time. Um, he has a little piece of floating cork bark in there, and these guys are near fully aquatic when uh, full grown, but um, my guy doesn't like to go in the water very much, and I'm still trying to figure out exactly why. Way back when in the 20 gallon he would go underwater all the time, but now that he's in the 10 he doesn't do it as much, which kind of concerns me. <clears throat> But I'm not too worried about it because he's got a good weight on him and everything. I just wish he'd go in the water a little bit more. But I have some Anubias, I've got water sprite, very low maintenance plants because I don't use any fertilizer in this tank at all. Um, in fact, I barely do anything to this tank because he's a very low waste output. <laughs> and the plants take care of most of it. I mostly just have to remove like physical debris from the tank sponge filters don't have the best mechanical filtration so this is my divided 10 gallon uh, there's a betta in each half um, on this side we have ripsaw and on the other side we have play-doh uh, play-doh used to be a lovely shade of white and blue but of course as a marble he turned solid but that's okay um, I originally had fluorescent lights on this tank and I was like oh I'm gonna buy LEDs because they're gonna be so much stronger so I bought the deep blue LED light without really looking into it very much. And uh, see if I can do this without blinding everybody. Maybe not. It's got three LEDs on there. So it's got a wicked bad spotlight effect on everything. So I have to deal with that. But all the plants, most of them are low lights. So they don't really mind. They just grow very slowly in this tank. But the water sprite explodes, of course. But that's just water sprite. And at the moment, I also have a uh, little cup of java moss floating because I just don't have the heart to throw away extra plants sometimes. So I just kind of keep them until they become super inconvenient. But, yeah. Eventually, I want this tank to be just all crypts. Just nothing but crypts. And right next to the divided 10, we have a little fluval spec 2-gallon, one of the older models with the the older light on it, and um, I like this tank a lot. I've had it for a long time. It has tons of space for filtration media in the back. It's got a little overflow in it. Um, I baffled the output because it is too strong for most bettas, so I just took a rubber band and a sponge and voila. Um, it's kind of sparse at the moment because I have an older betta in there. He's got some tumors. His name is Valentine. He's a double tail, um, and I just don't want to have too much stuff for him to get tangled in because he has problems swimming anyway because his fins are so long as a double tail but um he's also very tumory so we're just gonna let him live out his life in this little tank and here in the basement we have a 20-ish gallon bin with my rescue goldfish in it these are all common feeder goldfish that i rescued from walmart and i will link to their story in the description but they are all doing very very well um, I have to do a lot of water changes to keep this tank clean, but yeah. <laughs>